now that we know some characteristics about acids and bases, the rest of today's lesson is going to be learning how to uh, learning some vocabulary associated with acids and bases. So one of the first big words we're going to look at here is what does it mean to have a strong acid or base? What that means is that the ions completely dissociate. They break up when you put them in water, for example. So let's say we had a strong acid HX, a mystery acid, right? What that means is that it's going to break up into H plus and X minus ions, that you don't have any HX together molecules. Or let's say that you had a strong base. That strong base would be made up of maybe Z plus, whatever that is, and hydroxide, but that the Z plus and the hydroxide would be separate from one another. Strong means break it up into its pieces. If you have a weak substance, the opposite of strong, that means that the uh, substance stays together as a molecule. So if HX was a weak acid, it would be HX together, not broken up like you see above. If you had a weak base, the Z and OH would stay together, not broken up. How can you tell if a substance is strong or weak? Uh, one way to tell is by using a conductivity tester. We use these a few times in lab throughout the year. If it lights up when you put your conductivity tester in there, if it shows that it's conducting electricity, what does that tell you. And if it can't conduct electricity, what does that mean? Well, when you have electricity flowing, electricity is just moving charges. That's all electricity is. Moving charged particles. So, if you if your substance has the ability to conduct electricity, if you have moving charged particles, then that must mean it's a strong substance because as you can see in our picture, we have cations and anions, charged particles that are just floating around there in solution. So if it can conduct, that means that it's strong, lots of ions. If it cannot conduct, that means it doesn't have any charged particles floating around. It's molecules, neutral molecules instead, so that means it's weak. One other way you can tell if a substance is strong or weak is by using a pH uh, sensor. And based on that pH sensor, it can go anywhere from 0 to 14. 7 would be neutral, right? Here's your neutral substances like water. If something is really acidic, lots and lots of H plus ions, if it's a strong acid, it would have a pH close to zero. So that means it looks like H plus uh, X minus. If you get a pH that's still on the acidic side, but close to 7, so maybe your pH is 6.8, what that means is your acid looks mostly like molecules. There's not a lot of H plus ions floating around in solution for it to detect. On the other side, if you have a strong base, lots of hydroxide ions floating around, then it would be Z plus OH minus. If it's a 
weak base, mostly molecules, where it's ZOH together. There's not a lot of OH minus floating around separate and free for your pH detector to sense. And so it gives you a pH still on the basic side because you might have one hydroxide ion floating around there all by itself. Uh, but since it's mostly in molecule form, we would have a slightly basic pH. Then a couple other vocabulary words. So that's strong and weak. Then there's also concentrated and dilute. So what does it mean if something's concentrated? That means that there's lots of chemical packed into whatever container you're looking at and very little water. So it could look like um, HX, 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 lots and lots of your acid. And then, oh yeah, a little tiny little splash of water. It's mostly chemical. Or maybe you have ZOH, ZOH, ZOH. It's concentrated. It's packed with base. And then, oh yeah, a little splash of water. If it's dilute, that's the opposite of concentrated. So that means lots of water, very little chemical. And so it's lots of water. So water, water, water. Right? Load up that beaker full of water. And oh yeah, a little splash of acid in there, HX. Or lots and lots and lots of water again oh. tons of water and then just a little splash of base how can you tell if something's concentrated or dilute you can tell that by looking at its molarity the higher the molarity the more concentrated it is there's more moles per liter so what's an example of a high molarity. Uh, just as an example, if you have 12 molar hydrochloric acid, let's say, that's the most concentrated kind of hydrochloric acid we could buy from the chemical supply companies. So that would be a big number, 12 molar, uh, really concentrated. And then if it's dilute, Technically, anything lower than that number starts to be dilute, but maybe as an example, if you have 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid, that would mean that it's uh, there's only 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid molecules per liter of solution, and then the rest of that volume is all water. So it sounds kind of weird, but is it possible for you to have a dilute but strong acid or base. And yes, you can, because they mean two different things. Dilute just means lots of water, and strong means breaks up into ions. And so because they mean different things, it sounds weird to our ears, but it can be dilute and strong at the same time. Can you have a concentrated weak thing? Yep, again, you can. It sounds weird, right? Concentrated, lots of chemical. And weak means uh, stays together as molecules. They mean different things. So even though it sounds funny to say concentrated weak, it's possible. There is a little phrase that if you want to make a dilute acid, there's a funny little poem. Uh, do what you oughta. Uh, add acid to water. It works better if you say it with like a Boston accent there, right? Do what you oughta. Add acid to water. Uh, that if you want to dilute in a uh, chemical, usually you just dump extra water in. Uh, but if you start with an acid and just dump water um, into that 
a chemical, it could release a whole bunch of heat energy and it could actually shatter the glassware that you're putting it in. So if you want to dilute an acid, what you should do is put the acid into that beaker first. Or excuse me, see, now I'm saying it backwards. <laughs> you want to put the water in the beaker first and then add the acid to it. That's the safe way. When you add an acid and a base together, you saw this in our titration unit, you always get water because the H from the acid combines with, with that OH from the base and a salt. A lot of people think salt is just NaCl, but it's really the other product of an acid-base neutralization other than water. So we could say HCl and NaOH get added together to make HOH and NaCl. But that's not the only example of a salt. What if we did uh, H2SO4 and KOH? Well, we'd still get water as one product, um, and then we'd get K2SO4 as our other product right? And K2SO4 potassium sulfate would be our salt. It's just the other product of an acid-base reaction.